What's up everybody, Solo here, and today we are back with another video, and today we are looking at my 141 clear on the good old barb here, uh, with the wind. Um, so if you are the kind of person who enjoys watching these kind of plays, or you are actually playing your barb as yourself this season 19, do make sure to watch the entire video, since there is a lot of good tips and tricks in here that you might find useful. Also make sure to hit the like and subscribe, thank you so much. Now to start off with, as we know, we are looking for good open maps on this build. Um, this is a Silver Spire. We have a decent mob type, we have pretty good density, so we are going to try and make some good pulls. One of the key ingredients with this build is making uh, big pulls with lots of density and then using the kill streaks uh, to kill off the big monsters, but also the elites. So that's what we're trying to do. So you can see I'm not just stopping at the first uh, pack I found, but I keep moving around and I try and get as much density and as many packs as I can. Now the good thing about the barb is that we have a spear and a ground stump, so we have many tools to help us in, in creating big areas and big pools. So as you can see here, I'm making a setup here and I'm trying to kill all of these things here. Now a few things to note. Um, we do make big pools like this and then we do have to manually cast the wind. When you get this high on GRs, you have to have a lot of area damage in your gear, since area damage scales really well, the more monsters there are, and the longer they stay alive. So, in order to proc area damage with this build, we have to manually cast our wind. As you can see, if you look at my skill bars, every time you see the green bar over my whirlwind, that is when I'm casting some kind of spell. Now this would also show, for instance, with my ground stomp, but as you can see, it is mainly with my uh, wind manually casting it. So you can see how often I'm casting it, so you get an idea of when to do it. Now at this point, we are just uh, trying to get our 15 kills. We are trying to make some good ground stomps. Um, there's a thing in, in with this ground stomp called uh, pixel stagging, which pretty much means that you can stack monsters directly on top of each other if you ground stomp correctly. As you can see here, we get the 15 kills and as soon as we hit the 15, we got 50 as well and we did a big explosion. Now we are only left with a few leads pack, um, but that's fine. Um, so in terms of pixel stacking, you can actually make it so if you ground stomp correctly, all monsters will kind of like flop onto the same small area and stand on directly on top of each other which makes area damage insanely valuable so th these are one of the things we're going to be watching with. so look out for when i ground stomp and how i do it because we are trying to do that at this point we just want to try and finish off these packs but also make new pulls uh, there is no reason to try and kill these packs by themselves but we do notice that one of them are super low health i think it's the one up here yeah, we see that one is super low health, so we want to finish that one off, just so we don't have to make it follow around. It, when it is that low, just try and see if we can finish off, and that's why we pulled all of this, just to get some more area damage for finishing it off. And there we go, we pick up the globes, and this didn't really do much, but it makes it a bit easier, since we don't have to worry about making it follow for that much longer. Now, we have found another uh, decently big room on the Silver Spire. We just want to make sure we get the uh, remaining blue pack with us, and then we want to make a nice big pool again. And preferably we'll make it a, a lot bigger than we did before, since we have a very big room here and we want to make some very big pulls. So the kill streaks really just like um, stack up to each other. So when you hit 15, you want to go all the way up to like 100 or 150. That's what you're after. You need to do that. Right here, we see we have a conduit. Now, my mind immediately thinks, okay, now we are making the biggest pool ever, and we want to get as many packs as we can. So, normally, you would just go for something like this, right? But I'm immediately thinking, okay, I want more. So, I go down south here to see if we can find a bit more. Now, unlucky for us, there isn't a whole lot more since we would have to move a bit further, but that's fine. We want to get this up with us so we have more killstreak stacks and just more things that are gonna uh, give us progression with this conduit. Now, at this time, it is important to not panic with the conduit. You don't want to click it too quickly. You want to make sure that you have everything stacked up nicely so that the killstreak kills things for you. Um, that's what we're trying to do now. Now at this point, I do feel like we have stacked things nicely. 
So I click the conduit, immediately run into the big pack and the kill streaks start popping off. As you can see, we immediately go up to like 130 and we are close to 150. So what I do now is make sure I stand on the lead to finish out with the 150 here. Now we're not massively ahead of time. Um, that's so the reason of the mob time not being that good for progression. And also the first pull wasn't amazing. Um, at this point, we just wanna try and make as best use of our condor as we can. And we notice we are close to 200 stacks. So we use the conduit, get the 200 and we kill off this elite with it. At this point, there isn't much to do on this map here. So we just leave and we hope for a new big map. Now, we are met with a nice open fish string here and with a good mob type. Grotesques are really good because they spawn a lot of uh, small snakes and they proc a lot of killstreaks. As you can see, I instantly hit 50 killstreaks here. I click the shield, not much to do with it, so just click it um, to go with me. Now, at this point, we are at 70 stacks. Um, Normally 70 would be a bit of a an awkward number, but since we have grotesques, it's alright. Grotesques are pretty good. So we want to make a big pull again, just like before. Um, and we have good mob type for us this time around. So we try and find a big open area where we can stack as many elites as we can. Now, it is crucial that you pull from in front of you and behind you. Uh, when you have a map like this, you don't want to leave too much behind, especially the elites and the good progression mobs like grotesques. So make sure you where you find the place you want to set up. This we here is really good in this corner. You want to pull both from top but also where you came from so you get as much as you can. Now, as you can see, the game is starting to lag slightly. It doesn't matter a whole lot since we do have a shield pylon, but normally you would have to pause the game uh, once in a while just to let the game catch up. Because um, the game is not that great anymore in terms of the numbers and the amount of calculations. So as you can see, the game is starting to lag a bit. And normally this could be very lethal and very, uh, kill you very quickly if you lag too much. Uh, at this point, it is just about starting to kill them. As you can see there, I did a ground storm and I managed to pixel stack them really well. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot more grotesques in one spot than there normally could be. And that's because we pixel stacked them using a ground stomp. In order to do this, you want to um, ground stomp an area where there isn't a lot of enemies on. If you just ground stomp on top of them, it won't do much. You need to run away from them slightly so you can then go on top of them. As you can see here, we get the kill streaks and um, you also always want to make sure that you don't use your ground stomp right before 150 you want to have it so if you proc your 150 you can then pull enemies into it with your ground stomp now we are um moving on we see a speed pylon like you never ever want to click a speed pylon if you're trying to pull things and that's because it will cause what we call diminishing returns in terms of being able to pull enemies if you ever try pulling an enemy with your spear you will probably notice that you can maybe pull it two times and then it will stop being pulled that is because it gets immune a speed pylon does the same thing here which is also why you want to see if you can pull an enemy uh, two times with a spear or a ground stomp and then you want to move on and find others and give them some time to rest this is one of the biggest things you need to learn as a barb is how the diminishing returns work in terms of crowd control effects that's also why a lot of people will have issues trying to pull things because enemies get immune you need to let it rest for a bit just let some time pass and then come back from later so as you can see we move up here now and try and pull these slightly it is better to pull slightly from two sides than trying to pull one side uh the, you know completely so at this point we are trying to make a big pull down the middle and that should hopefully spawn um we see here we have a nice little maggot root uh, with illusionists. These are very nice for just spawning a uh, lot of, of small um, maggots that we can then use for kill streaks. And as you saw before, um, we were at 230 something stacks. Um, that's why you saw me trying to reset them uh, by trying to teleport but then die. That, that's fine. That's a hard reset. Um, 230 is a very awkward number because that means I would have to get to 300 stacks in order to get my next kill streak. That would be pretty difficult in terms of just resetting and then I can go from 0 to 15. 
at this point we are uh, pretty happy with our pool here. We have a lot of small monsters in the middle from the maggot brutes. Um, and we do also have a lot of big progression monsters in here, like the grotesques. As you can see here, the game is lagging quite a bit now. And we don't have a shield pylon, so we do have to make sure that we play it safe and we pause the game to let the game catch up once in a while. At this point there isn't much to do, um, you just want to try and spin around on the same enemies, try and get some really good pixel stacking in using your ground storm, and just make sure everything is nicely clumped up for when you then get your kill streaks happening. Always pay attention to the amount of kill streaks you have and when you have your physical rotation or whatever element you're playing. So as you can see, we proc our kill streaks and we immediately spawn from that. So you can see that was a massive explosion of just a shit ton of, uh, of kill streaks happening at the same time. Now we get Ray Shell here. Um, he is a, a decent boss. He does a lot of damage, but the good thing is he doesn't spawn any ads. Um, I do try and move him into some twisters, but as you can see, he is almost impossible to move since so like just dancing around. So we do get a bit of lucky damage from the twisters just passing by. Maybe they're like 5% of his health, so we'll take it. And now we just have to start stacking our Strigan, so we do more and more damage on him. Now in terms of Rift Gardens, there isn't a lot to do um, if you're playing with Strigan. Just want to make sure you have your wrath up and use your your stomp um, to keep up your band of might now what you can also do if you really pay attention is you can try and stun his abilities so for instance if you're playing against a rift guardian that does some kind of ability like the choker you can usually stun it with your ground stomp to make sure he doesn't cast it now i'm trying to do something similar on this guy but the most important uh, factor is to keep your band of might up and if you can stun some abilities that's fine but as long as you keep your band of might up that's fine then and as you, the keen rear will have noticed we did still have our speed pylon back then um, which we can now use for the swift garden because the speed pylon is very very bad for the mobs as i explained before in terms of diminishing returns and how the entire thing works like it making it almost impossible to kill like to pull mobs with you so having it for the rift gun is a lot easier now i pick it up here simply because i think this is the closest he will ever be to the speed pylon and i don't want to lose my my kill streak stacks because that is like 17 percent damage so just pick it up here to stack our stricken even quicker Normally you would probably want to wait a bit more before clicking the speed pylon But this guy is pretty bad at just walking around really nilly not really having any control of where he is So in order to get the speed pylon while he is near I just click it now to make sure I don't lose my kill streak sex either As you can see there I try to stun his uh, big dick uh, hitting ability But for some reason it didn't work for me even though I stunned him, the animation still happened and I procced my, my cheat death, right? So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, if that doesn't work, there's no reason to try and save it. So now I need to, I need to know that I have to dodge it and I can't uh, just stun it, which would be a lot easier. As you can see, our stricken is starting to stack up and we are actually starting to chunk him now on the uh, physical CV rotations, but... What we need to make sure is, is that we don't die, especially to the one-shotting abilities. Um, Rachel is one of the Rift Guardians in the game that will one-shot you the hardest. Uh, so almost no matter how much health you have, that big ability will one-shot you. And also it has a higher radius than you might think. So the best thing to do, as you can see what I'm doing, is I'm running behind my Templar, making him tank it. But if you're just standing right behind him, it won't actually do anything. You need to run further behind him because it has a splash effect. So you need to do that. And, and there we can see again, we got hit really hard and we proc once again. Uh, now, luckily for us, we did play with proc this time around, which was really needed for this Rift Guardian. Otherwise, we would have definitely failed this Rift. 
um, it's getting very close. Like, I'm starting to panic now. I see that the timer is like 30 seconds and his health is still decently high. But we do have lots of stricken and we do try and make this happen at this point. We get our physical rotation and we get super close and there it is. I hope you guys found this video useful. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Um, there will be lots of more clears and content to come. Especially also we will make a guide on how to play this in terms of the gear and stuff. So do make sure to look out for that. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out everybody.